welcome back to the Pen and Ink Well. Thank you so much for joining me. It's Mother's Day, so it's really nice to actually sit here with my children recording this video behind the camera there. And it's nice to sort of spend a relaxing Sunday here in the UK with my family, but also sharing some thoughts with you guys. And, you know, with Mother's Day for me, it's about doing the things I enjoy doing, and this is really what I enjoy doing. So, like I always say, something different, I suppose it is always something different. And today, I want to talk about something that's a little bit outside my comfort zone, I would sort of say, really. Oh, by the way, new hair. Fantastic. <laughs> I'm so pleased. I had a look at the last couple of videos I did last week, and wow, how horrendous, but so pleased. Big shout out, actually, to Sam and Laura and Beth at Vintage here next to where I am. So pleased with what they've done with my hair. Love the colours. But anyway, back to what you watch this for. And thank you so much as well, quickly, um, for those of you that have left comments and are happy for me to carry on with the, in um, the intros to these videos and to inject a little of my personality into this. So, you know, and it's nice. I'm not here to make the same videos as everybody else because otherwise what's the point you know this is about the way I sort of do it and the information that I can give and hopefully people find it useful so as I said something outside my comfort zone and I'm talking vintage pens it's the first time I've reviewed a vintage pen because well to be honest this would this scare me a little bit um I go to the pen shows and they are filled with vintage pens I look on things like the Fountain Pen Network and there are lots of people talking about vintage pens. There's a lot of collectors of vintage pens and I suppose for me they've always been a little bit uncomfortable because I don't necessarily know how what to do with them, how to fix them. Um, I do also have a bit of a thing. I like a nice shiny new box. I like knowing that it's definitely going to work. Um, I, I like to see what new modern things are being done with pens. However, I do also sort of appreciate the fact that these pens have stood the test of time and are still around. And I suppose what better pen, as far as I'm talking about with vintage pens to start with, than an iconic one really, and one that I read so much about two, three years ago, and I have tried having one of these pens. I've bought two, I've sold two. Um, just couldn't find the right one. And <laughs> this sort of story goes back, really. Let me tell you what I'm talking about first, otherwise it looks a bit weird, I suppose. So I'm talking about the Parker 51. So this is what we've got here, is the Parker 51. Um, huge, iconic pens that sort of date back to, I think I was just sort of looking now, date back to about the 1941, something like that, and were being produced from 41 through to 1972, and sold in their millions as the time progressed. And there are loads of them out there of varying qualities, um, varying designs, and they've really become a collector's item. As I said, I've had two, I've sold two. And I think for me, the reason I sold both of them is, I said before, I like pretty things. <laughs> I do like pretty things. I like a pretty pen. I like some nice colors. Um, I'm not always the practical sort. Um, however, let's go back about a month and a half when I was at the Southwest Pen Show with Caris and spending time as I always do that day with John Soroka with Oxonian and one of the most interesting men I've sort of come across to spend time talking about pens with, you know, just fascinating. And we were talking about vintage and he has the most enviable collection and we were looking at the 51 and he was <laughs> trying his best to sort of convince me of its qualities and being me was sort of like just sort of it's plain it's boring it's functional it is it's plain there's nothing to be said about the fact that it's plain however he said borrow one just borrow one borrow one like because his pens are always going to be beautifully well tuned Borrow one, have a look at it, and then see what you think. So I did. And this is it now. So I've so as I say, it's been about four or five weeks. Sorry, John, for keeping it so long. 
and I've been having a play with it and I've filled it with ink and I'm going to let you know what I think about it and give you a closer up look. So really, thank you very much for joining me. I'm going to turn the camera around now in just two seconds and I'm going to give you a closer up look of this Parker 51 and tell you really what I think of it now um, and whether I would now start adding one to my collection or not but also to give you a bit of an idea as to whether it's something that you want. The one thing I will tell you though, it is not going to be filled with, I'm not an expert with vintage pens, so the, fine, the finer details in this are going to be sketchy. It really is just my experience of this and an overview as to you know what I think of it. There is so many sites dedicated to these pens that you can get a lot of information from far more knowledgeable people than myself if you want the sort of finer details on the materials and the various nibs that are out there, the various um, tips on the caps and the bottom, the jewels and everything around that. But otherwise, thank you. We'll turn this around and I'll be back with you very, very shortly. Welcome back. So we're looking at the Parker 51, as we said, and as I said, you know, just shortly, please disclaimer right from the start here, I am no expert in this, so I'm going to just give you my sort of thoughts. So this was kindly loaned to me for review and for sort of trying out and I suppose to sort of convince me of its qualities <laughs> by um, the lovely Oxonian John Soroka at the South West Pen Show a few weeks ago. So this is it. So this is the Parker 51. Let me give you a few stats. I think this is the standard size Parker 51. There is a Demi, which is a, you know a shorter one, but this is weight wise, this is 23 grams in weight with the cap and it's 16 grams without. So this is a lightweight pen. Dimensions, it's 137 millimetres as it stands as you've seen it now. It is 153 millimetres posted and it posts very well as you can imagine just looking at the shape. And it's 129 millimetres unposted. So what we've got here, Parker 51, as I said, introduced around about 1941 and was made up until 1972, I believe. Again, please don't, because if I've got it all completely wrong, but I think, you know, doing sort of, you know, for some research, that was the information that I found out. Um, and in 1948, they brought out the aerometric, the aromatic filling. So this is what this one is. This is an aromatic um, filling system, and they've also got the vacuumatic filling system. So let's have a look at what we've got here. So this, I hope the colour, I'm not sure the colour's coming across sort of that well. It's coming across sort of a much darker blue from what I can see in the camera here to what it is. This is actually a very sort of teal green, I would sort of describe it as. This is a teal green colour. And then the cap is a gold cap. And I did notice on it, I don't know if whether, you, whether the camera will pick it up, but I did notice that it does say down here, it's got written one tenth, 12 carats are gold. So I'm not sure what that means exactly, whether that means that it's gold or not sort of gold. So the, ta the top here we have this sort of beautiful sort of pearl-like jewel to it. And from what I've sort of seen of various ones on sale, they come with, you know, they can be a very different sort of, whether they have jewels, don't have jewels. I've ha owned ones that didn't, but this is really beautiful, this pearlescent jewel. Typical Parker arrowhead clip. You know, this pen is at least, uh, you know, this pen is 60 years old, I would say at least. So the clip, not the springiest sort of, you know, that I've seen. But it seems to, what I found with a couple that I've had, it looks like this has done it a little bit because you can see these slight marks here where the clip moves, is that this tends to get loose and the clip rotates around. But this one hasn't done that, so, it, you know, but it obviously, I'm can see that it has done that at some point. The cap has this sort of ribbing down it, which is sort of nice. And the gold really complements this teal colour very well. So sort of cigar shaped to the end, into this sort of point here at the end. So we'll take this off and we'll see really what the features of this. Let's zoom this out a little bit so you can see a little better. So let's take this cap off. So just slide cap off. And what we've got is this sort of almost this one piece here. It does obviously screw out, but it continues from the top right the way through the same material, pen. And then this sort of, it's almost like the cap just seals over. You know, it doesn't 
attached to the you know to the screw point here it goes further on past that so you've got a hooded nib and this is you know what they're sort of you know in favor this nib is pretty much sort of covered just has this tiny little point that you see through here um again i believe this is a 14 karat gold nib and you can see at the bottom there and they come with i've seen them from extra fine nibs that can be quite difficult to get here in the UK. I've sort of found experience myself up to bold nibs and then people have done various sort of grinds on these nibs as well. And then as you say just one sort of piece out. So I'll show you the funnel system here. So we'll open this up and as I said this is the aromatic version and you can see it sort of has its instructions written on it to fill Press ribbed bar firmly four times, holding pen points down. Wipe points with soft tissue, which I think is great. And you can see there, it says Parker 51. So there's this rib point. So it is a matter of, this goes in the ink, and you press here four times, in and out sort of four times, and it fills this, this sack that's in here this PVC sack, PVC vinyl sack with ink. And then it and it holds a lot. I mean obviously being a vintage pen, I think that's the sort of thing there are lots of things that could be wrong with it that need some work, whether the nib needs work on it, whether that sack might have broken so it's not holding the ink and you've got leakage from there. So let's see how this writes. I filled this up with Kelly Green ink. So this is, let me see, get this in shot for you. Oh, no, I'm going the wrong way. Let's go on out. So this is the Parker 51 Aromatic. I have no idea what size nib this is. I don't know. It was kindly loaned to me. Um, John knows I like a finer nib pen. I would say this is round about a, a fine nib, I would say, a sort of western fine, possibly towards the medium side. And this is Diamine Kelly Green. I sort of see what they said. These nibs are lovely. It writes beautifully smooth, it's functional, it's a lovely size. So you can see that in my hand, it holds well. I'll post it for you to sort of see. It posts extremely well and doesn't, even though this cap is obviously much heavier, this cap is, well, this cap is six grams of the total weight and is you're know, pretty much half the weight of the rest of the pen, but it does it, it does make it top heavy, but not uncomfortably so. I wouldn't post it, but you know some people choose to, and it is comfortable to write with posted. I just don't feel the need to sort of do that. It it's smooth, it's consistent. I haven't had any issues with it. This one I haven't had any leaks with at all. It has very little movement in this nib but it's not supposed to it is there the word i keep coming back to is functional this pen is functional is it pretty for me no it doesn't set my <laughs> it doesn't set me into any form of excitement about how pretty this is um but it is classic and functional and I can see why people would sort of get into them. There are so many different finishes available from you know silver caps to um, full gold or stainless steel actual bodies of this pen. The, as you say, different filling systems from the Aromatic or the Vacumatic, they changed slightly when the Demi came out. So there, if you, those that do collect these, there must be oh tens and tens of varying options out there that people have and put together. Um, would I have one in my collection? If I found one for the right price, yes, I would. Because 
it would work day in day out if I was writing a lot it writes very well it writes very comfortably and I'd enjoy it and you wouldn't have you know you wouldn't I don't ache writing with it it's not uncomfortable it's a nice shape and it doesn't let you down and it holds a fair amount of ink considering that it's you know that sack is big and it holds a lot of ink for you know and considering this pen is 60 years old at least it very well it very much has stood the test of time and I think it's still going you know they're still sought after um you'll find some made in England some made in the US um do you think if there's anything else really to let you know price wise varies enormously absolutely huge I you know I've seen them from 30 40 pounds I've seen them into the hundreds I suppose it would depend on the quality the color the finish the jewels whether they're single jewels I think I've seen some with double jewels I really you know what I'm not sure what that means but eBay you will find them if you go to any pen show you will find a load of them they are out there it's whether you find the one that you want that is sort of um, that you want to add to your collection I'm absolutely gutted that years ago when I first started collecting pens and I am talking probably four or five years ago now when I first got into fountain pens I saw one on a website and it was in yellow with an extra fine nib and I was just slightly too late for it and I've never found one since but that would be perfect for me but um I will be kindly giving this back to John and I'm very very grateful for the fact that he loaned this to me and if I find the right one then I will definitely get one in my collection. Hope you found it useful. Bye!